What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Before we start today's video, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Frankenstein Creations. Run by brothers Garrett and Steen with the help of their friends Justin and Alex, these two brothers make gear for scare actors by scare actors. From the well-detailed mask design to haunt equipment that you may need, they actually sculpt, mold, and airbrush all their original designs. And they know what it's like to have a tight mask or an uncomfortable one during the season. So they took you into consideration when designing these masks. Go check out frankensteincreations.bigcartel.com and see if they have anything you can use this Halloween or haunt season. And a very special thank you to Frankenstein Creations for being the sponsor of today's video. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast, episode 160, The Road to 200. Should be a good one. We got a very special guest today, another... Uh, amazing, talented scare actor from one of my personal favorite haunts, not Scary Farm. This is Rusty, and he's got a long, long history of doing various things at the event. So, Rusty, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good. I'm, uh, you know, just chilling, uh, taking college outside of Scary Farm, and yeah, man, life's chill. Life's chill, man. I feel that, man. And I know we're all just eagerly waiting to get back into the fog and just be in that environment again, man. I know myself, I'm ready. I know you're probably ready. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, for sure. One, so let's uh, let's start from the very beginning, man. What what was the, the initial moment you knew you loved Halloween and horror and, and just haunt in general? Oh, well, dating all the way back to when I was six years old, when I discovered Chucky over at a car show, they had a, like a car show and they had a Chucky doll and Tiffany doll in there. And, you know, that sparked my horror interest. And then I started watching horror movies at 10 years old on a sci-fi channel when they would censor it, you know, so yes. my mom found a leeway. And then my love for Scary Farm happened in the same kind of way where I was on Jaguar and I saw them building a maze back there over in the railroad for Camp right. Snoopy called Terror Vision back in 06. And I asked my mom, I said, why are they building this? Why are they building a um, Sesame Street attraction? Isn't that SeaWorld's thing? <laughs> and, yeah. And my mom's like, and my mom's like, no, they do a thing called Scary Farm there. And I say, oh, is it, is it for kids? And she's like, no, your mom is terrified. So <laughs> over the course of that, I, even as a kid at 10 years old, I like to research things on the internet. Right. So I watched TPA's videos back in the day. And then my mom and I, when we go visit, we would talk to the people that would, would uh, greet and say goodbye to those who leave. And I just got my information from there from when my mom couldn't. Dude, oh, slow man. Process. TPA, man, it's funny you bring that name up because that is, I've always said, was literally the foundation as to why a lot of us do what we do today. I mean, that guy was was bringing POVs before it was even cool to do POVs. You know what I mean? Now everyone does them. And right. it was all because of the foundation laid by Rick West himself with Theme Park Inter uh, Adventure, TPA. Um that was oh god I I miss TPA man TPA was was amazing. Me too. They were a uh, a good thing and you know it's funny funny story um sidetracking a little bit but I I remember last Halloween or no last December uh Corona Haunt put on a home haunt uh like a a, a Christmas themed one and uh, I had happened to run into Rick West there and he was gonna film the whole POV to put on the Instagram and stuff. He goes, I'm gonna do it classic TPA style and everything. And I was like, oh, well, I gotta, I gotta walk through with you to, to see this in action. Cause you know, growing up as a fan, this, this is just like a dream come true. So yeah, 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 man. I mean, I love Rick West. I loved everything he did with TPA and I, I love what he's doing now. So, I mean, I always, I always yeah. owe it to him to, to where we are today. Wouldn't be because of, you know, because of him, you know, he, he really set that, that foundation for all of us. So yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. TPA, man, that, that, that's really cool that a lot of us, that's how we kind of got into the, the love for haunt was watching the POVs and watching the, the construction builds and, and just getting the theories out there. And now it's, it's, it's grown to, um, us just having a, a fun extension of that, of, of it actually interviewing the people who work these events and, and, and get a behind the scenes look of, of their perspective of these events, such as yourself. So when was the first year you finally were like, you know what? Like I, I've seen this 
for many years now. I'm ready to do this. Let me go uh, audition. Ooh, actually, back in 2009, when I went as a guest, like right after I visited, I said, this is what I want to do. Right. And, you know, and I used to go to the thing that Rick West used to do over at um, the little tiki place. I forgot what it's called over at the hotel where he would do a TPA meeting. Right. So I got to meet a lot of the talent back then. Some of them I'm still friends with today. Um, and so they kind of in a way put me under their wing while also letting me independently audition and, you know, interview and stuff. And from right then there, once I, it was hard for me too, when uh, I got the role for Paranormal Inc. in 2015, right? because I was so excited, even though they were legit dead on serious, like mafia style, to put it this way, to say, don't tell anyone, not even your family. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, shoot, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It's wild to know that that maze was around as long as I was, pretty much. It's, you know, it's funny hearing that story. You think of stuff like you know Marvel Studios and stuff of how strict they are with keeping mm-hmm. NDAs and secrets and stuff, and, and Knotts is just as strict with wanting to keep that secrecy until it's time for them to reveal it and for pe- fans to experience it. So that makes me laugh when I hear kind of that. It's like, don't tell anyone about this. Like, you gotta. Yeah. We're gonna. We're keeping tabs on you. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, it, 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 it cracks me up because sometimes like if someone's really bugging me about it, I would kind of troll them with something that's like, it could be obvious, but at the same time, it will never happen. Like I say, oh, they're doing, uh, they're doing infected versus dead of winter or something, something <laughs> stupid. And they'll either say, okay, you're, you're being a smart butt, but I appreciate it. You don't have to tell me. It kind of puts them in a corner without me being a jerk so. yeah no it's it's like the the time when they did um freaking red barn 2 gunslinger's revenge and all oh, that and yeah. i mean that was such a good i love it i wish more haunts would do that because right. it, it throws the fans off it throws the guests off it even throws talent off you know what i mean it's like yeah. well it's like wait 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 I, I was casted in this and now i'm seeing it's this it's like what mm-hmm. so you don't know what's true what's not so that's what i love about the right. the secrecy and yeah. stuff of that so Low key, I was bummed that they didn't do Red Barn Gunslinger's Revenge because I was really curious to see if they were going to do something like that and how that's going to go down. Exactly, I know. So, and, and it's funny you bring up Red Barn. That was so. I remember you were sending me a bunch of uh, kind of things to get an idea of what you were in and 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 mm-hmm. stuff that we've seen you in. Uh, Red Barn. That that's something that that is also uh, you know relates to you, man. Tell tell us about your time in Red Barn, who you played, uh, how your experience was, and 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 how it went going forward absolutely um i would personally say it's my favorite year working there as a monster and in maze because i don't know it just i've heard the saying from some monsters where you work for a certain amount of years and there's always that one year that just stands out right and working that maze it was it was a lot of fun for me because i'm a huge fan of um movies like texas chainsaw and devil's rejects so it gave me an extra oomph to really be human but not human so it was a challenge for me right and as the hog i it depends on where i was placed like when i was i switched around everywhere because the hog character during that year of 2017 he was more of like he could be anywhere right so like for example in the in the body bag room i would kind of pull a jack torrance kind of deal where if you see the tpa video that came through and i have a funny story about that in a bit um I peeked out of that little, um, it looks like a full on, uh, wall, seamless right. wall. And then you just, it's kind of hard for me to pull that thing down sometimes, <laughs> you know, and cause I'm not aware of my own strength. And <laughs> one, one time I almost broke it, but I realized, Oh, I just push it in, slide back up. <laughs> so I do that kind of thing. Um, it was even more entertaining in that room when I would only on slow nights, I do this where I would kind of walk in between the bodies and people would just be like, where is he right now? <laughs> um, and on the outside, when I had the chainsaw for a week, cause they would rotate people out there as well with that, who are the hogs. Right. And you know, that's the closest I'm ever going to get to stunts. Cause you know, I wanted to be a slider as a kid, but after seeing how much wear and tear it does to the young people, I'm like, I know my limits. It was worth the dream, but it, I know for real, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> You know, and I can't do bungee, so that's as close as I can ever do with stunts. And it was, it's probably the most I've ever lost weight and gained muscle. And you know, it was fun too because sometimes I would mess with people by 
you know, if I feel like having a little fun and not being completely serious, I would make like a sort of rhythm with the chainsaw. Like uh, one time I was scaring this guy who was pretty much making the group he was with annoyed. Right. So I was messing with him with the chainsaw and they were like cheering and like clapping. <laughs> so I, with a chainsaw, I, I can't make a noise for life of me, but I was emulating the sound of like, you know, in baseball when they do that clap. Right. So I was trying to emulate that and they got it right away. <laughs> it made it more fun. So oh, that's great. Well, my, man. my favorite room to work in, in that maze though, as the hog was the cult room. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have a good friend of mine who, and for everyone else, I will mention I'm keeping them anonymous, keeping them anonymous for respect. Um, but you know, like myself, um, I have a mental disability with autism. So you know, and my friend in that room, he he's in a wheelchair. So we work together as like, so I was kind of like a blackout and talent for him. Right. Because even though even though he can pretty much well take care of himself unless he asks me, which is kind of how we formed that friendship to begin with. Right. So there's times where someone would get in his face and while being in character, because I'm kind of like the bodyguard for the whole family. Right. Of the maze in the story, I would kind of intimidate them being like, you touch the bleeder or the preacher if you were to non if you were to not use the pun name for it. Right. Uh, <laughs> I would look at him and sometimes I would do this voice where I would go, Sinner, leave. So <laughs> it would put them out. They'll be like, Oh shoot, okay, we're out. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And I was a butcher for a week, too, because some guy quit. And that was fun for what it was. They didn't get it was just random. So, you know, my Cassidy came up to me. He's like, hey, um, you're not going to need the hog mask. You can keep it. Just don't use it. I'm going to have you in the butcher room. And I said, oh, cool. This should be interesting. And I'm like, do I have makeup or anything? He's like, no, nah, you can have with or without whatever works for you. So I went full improv and some of my friends in the maze thought I was crazy, but they're like, "Hey, you do you if it works." There you go. I would put I would put fake blood on me, right? And then, I mean, this is I even look back going, "What the heck am I doing?" But it worked. <laughs> Luckily, I went to the little um, flower bed in front of the wilderness dance hall, and I got a little bit of dirt on my clothes and on my hair. Like I legit want to be as gross and grimy as possible. Oh, you this. went you went full method on this. Oh yeah, it was funny because my. Cassidy came by when I was doing the whole dirt thing and he goes, are you sure this is your third year? I'm like, yeah, uh, I'm, I am. And he goes, well, you surprised me. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things, man. It's you, if something works in your mind, go for it. And if it yeah. doesn't work, you know, it doesn't. And you just move on from there. Don't let it discourage you as a friend of mine told me. Hundred hundred percent, man. You gotta just do you and, and just and roll with the flow and you don't be afraid to test things out. If it doesn't work, hey, at least you tried it. If it does work, well then you're glad you tried it. You know what I mean? It's something that works. Um mm -hmm. so what was uh, uh, going back a little bit, what was your, your the first uh ever maze you were put in when getting hired on? Was it Red Barn and then you did that for a few years or or did you do something else before Red Barn? Um I switched every I did every different i did different maze and different character every year i started off in paranormal its first year in 2015 okay and then i did two fairy as a dentist uh, the following year in 16 and then red barn 17 and dark ride as a dunce clown um if you are aware of what the character looks like some people aren't so right um there's so many of us in there <laughs> uh in 2018 and then dark entities in 2019 which I, it's funny because I saw you coming through before I even knew it was you. <laughs> and when I saw the video, I'm like, holy cow, that's me. <laughs> I remember hearing the people in front of you. And, you know, it, that character was cool because I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, how I actually evolutionized that character throughout the, the season. Right. Um, and then last year I was in Corn Stalkers, which ironically I saw you. And uh, I can't remember your friend's name, but I remember you guys coming through too. And, <laughs> And I remember, I think it was your friend or yourself. It's kind of hard with the, hearing from the camera, but um, I got one of you guys. Yeah, you, probably, you, you probably, you probably, it was probably me or someone, one of my, but yeah, my buddy Sammy usually comes and he's also pretty uh, easy to scare too. So I always put out a bounty on his head every haunt season. Like anyone that can scare him on camera, like you get bonus <laughs> points. Like it's, it's fun. I used to be that way with my mom before working <laughs> and she would love and hate me for it. <laughs> 
I'm like, uh, mom, it's gonna make you brave. It's gonna help you out. Exactly. That's what, that's what I tell him. And he he now he loves haunt season. He can't wait for it every mm-hmm. single year. My mom um, has a love hate about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so paranormal, uh, iconic maze just had its farewell season last year. You got mm-hmm. to be part of the 2015 uh, lineup for that. How was uh, working paranormal? How was that experience uh, for starting for your first year, man? Yeah, it was it was definitely something I didn't think too much into it during scare school until actually dress rehearsal, because after we were done doing that, uh, John Cook basically gave everybody in the maze that they can. We all squeezed in like a mosh pit in that showroom. Right. And he's like, this is he just wants to show us how important this thing is. So right after all that was shown, I was like, this is it. Like, that's why I knew it was. It was a passion from the start right and then once the people came through that reality started setting in and as being a demon it was cool because when i worked it and it seemed to be the same thing from what i observed going through it on my nights off that we have the choice to speak or not um like for myself i it was all occasional i did either english which was more of a Ray Park, Darth Maul kind of vibe with it. I like it. Um, and for and another one, I did partial time, which luckily no none guests point out, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, I did some Latin and French from what I could easily translate. So. Wow. So you, again, yeah. you, you, you like to take your characters and really full method them, and I like that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I, I like to learn how to, even outside of Han, I like to learn how to figure things out. And luckily with the whole Latin and French thing, my grandparents go, you know, to Europe and place like that. And, you know, they have booklets that they save. So sometimes I'll look through where I ask them, hey, how do you say this? And it's only like little short things like, you know, some like one time I went past um, toward this one guy who was already terrified, but he wasn't trying to show it. And I went behind his ear and I went. Infernal, which means hell or lake of fire. Right. And that's my only way to say it without getting in trouble. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because I remember asking, I think it was either John or one of my cast leads. I can't remember which, but I said, hey, can I say hell if it's not an insult? Because I'm a demon, but I don't want to be offensive. And I was told, well, you can if you want to. And if they get a complaint, just know you try it. Yep. Exactly. Like I said, trying things, and then if it doesn't work out, then at least you tried it, and you say you can done it. So, right, right. that's a lot of fun. So, I mean, paranormal. I mean, going looking back at that maze over the evolution of from when it started to how it ended. I mean, it's just it, it's just constantly improved, and it was easily a fan favorite of the event for many years. Um, always had a very very long line, and as far back as I can remember. It's always had the line that he would would even extend even after hours, and you know that would oh, yeah. you know go down until every last guest got to go through it and play through it. Which you know, yeah. big bravo to them. They did something unique. Um, but yeah, dude, paranormal was one of those those mazes that honestly you're gonna look back on ten years down the line, and it's still gonna be in pe- people talking about it and stuff. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those mm-hmm. mazes that definitely left a a print on uh, on the. Um, events long history so uh, i'm excited to see what comes next in that location and i'm excited to see if they want to do something similar again down the line in the future like i'm all for it man it's, it should be a lot of fun um going on to year two what, what, what do we go do next what, what's next for you in year two um we over we are going next next door to paranormal tooth fairy tooth fairy back when before dark entities arrived there was the tooth fairy which was uh a very cringe maze with the, the sound of the drill yep. and, you know, but it, that's what it made it iconic and that's what made it scary. And that's what mm-hmm. made that story come to life. The tooth fairy came down. Right, so right, yeah. who did you play in tooth fairy and how was your experience in that one? Um, I was one of the dentists. In fact, I had a mask, but uh, Tim over at wardrobe said, now nah, he doesn't need one. I want to do something different. So I got makeup and you know, that was a that was a big leap for me in my second year because I, I had to do full improv as, as I was recommended for this role. Right. It was all last minute, too. And so as a character, I kind of pulled a like a twisted version, more twisted version of Dr. Satan from House of Thousand Corpses. Good choice. Um, if, if he talked. Right. Pretty much. And so as that character it was a lot of fun because 
pretty much I wanted to work that maze a year prior, but luckily I got paranormal. And so things like connected anyway, because I was afraid of the dentist before then. Right. Not like a full on phobia, but I just didn't care for it. But now it, it was kind of on my way of facing my fear. And, you know, some of the people at Carnival will tell you the same thing with clowns. They're like, I was terrified of clowns. Now I'm a clown. So you got to face your fear somewhere or another. Exactly. And it was fun, too, because, you know, it's probably, and I'm just saying this just from what people are afraid of, it's probably one of, if not the top two or top three easiest roles to freak people out in. Because, I mean, sometimes I don't even have to say anything. I can just gesture people to sit in the chair or, you know, I'd put in the x-ray and I kind of look at them like, like that. Yeah. And they, they wouldn't have anything to do with it after that. They're like, no, we are going past you. And then right then and there, I'll talk. I'll be like, get back here. Give me your teeth. Oh, <laughs> you know, it just, it's funny too. Cause this is back pre, I guess 2018 when they started getting a little more, um, serious about what we can say and not say right you know, i never crossed the line of course even back then but they were more lenient on what we can say to guests that you know so i know one kid he was kind of giving me lip so i said i can get rid of your teeth your tongue and your lips so that you can never talk again <laughs> and you know and the mom looked at me in disapproval and i looked at her and i said don't worry i have a special place for you in the infirmary and you know just uh, it was fun playing that character because you know it just the facial expressions are just as um important as a silent character because you know both can do the talking for you right so and it's fun having a like when i would work on the dentist chair either with or without talent you know being the one of the victims it was it was fun to just mess around and even look like the, I don't even notice the guests coming through and I'll be like, Hey, you're late or Hey, I'm busy. And even saying that just something mundane in real life could easily make them want to find the nearest emergency exit. Yeah. A hundred percent, dude. I, I have my own, uh, my own phobias with that man. Like I said, the drill sound, as you hear that walking in, it's just so eerie and just, it just gives you shivers down your spine. Oh, yeah. no, that maze freaks me out too. Yeah. Even walking through it before, you know, the, the sounds turn on, I'm just like, dang daniel miller you are one twisted creator but we love you for it keep doing it. exactly so, keep bringing pre keep bringing the original fears to life man because i need a nice event with all the good originals and that's why i go to knots because i love to see what originals yeah. they can all come up with that that in my opinion listen it, it is one thing to create ips and bring that to life because that is also a very hard process of having to watch movies over and over again taking thousands and thousands of images and, and really trying right. to replicate yeah. those scenes but I think it's a lot harder to uh, – it's also easy to create originals because you know you got to create something that people are going to get scared of, but you have a lot of ideas that can come to mind that are mm -hmm. just aching to get out. So it, it is cool to see uh, originals because you can really do whatever you want with them, and you can literally control the way people right. uh, are sold to the story and whatnot, which I love. So that's, Absolutely. That's amazing. I, that's why I look forward to going to Knott's every year to see uh, returning mazes and what, what's new, especially next year. I mean, Paranormal's gone, so I'm excited to see what comes next for, for Paranormal's uh, uh, spot and and to see how they can up the ante and, and keep it going from there. Um, year three, you go to uh, Red Barn, right? Mm -hmm. And we did talk about Red Barn. That's another great maze that was there before uh, Origins took over that one. Um mm -hmm. Going into year four, what are we looking at now, and, and how does that uh, continue to improve your your method acting and whatnot into this next role? Right, right. Uh, the, my fourth year, I was in uh, Dark Ride, and <sighs> I was the dunce clown, as I mentioned a little while ago. And it was hard for me to, you know, I was actually a completely silent character because the maze was so loud. Right. So. I kind of acted like a mime in a way, or, or even then like in more of the darker rooms, you know, like, like the catacombs when you first walk in or even the, the black light room with the guy in the chair, I would just be animated like moving like a prop or I just be completely still. Right. And then I just go in for the kill. So that was, that was probably the first time I've ever was told either, Hey, be lively or be a part of your home and then come to life. So and that's what I loved about Dark Ride. It kind of had the feel of things are alive, like the chair and stuff like that. Right. But you don't know if it's supernatural or it's just some 
unexplained thing that dark ride likes to keep making you guess when you walk through right you know what it, it's funny that you brought that up because i actually never really thought of it that way now now thinking about that what you just said it is true because you don't know whether this is paranormal or this is just some one trying to make you think it's paranormal and it's just all in your head you know what i mean so it, it kind of gives you that especially when you get to the end of the the maze it's like it's a big build up to like this abandoned uh attraction ride and at the end you see all these clowns in this what they call clown hell uh just yeah. causing chaos at the end of the attraction and, and that's your kind of your last get out before you actually exit the attraction will you make it out alive or will you be stuck in this forever eternity of clown hell so right right join our circus yeah be one of us and what's interesting too is uh one of the talent there i don't know his name because i didn't really get to know him all that well but uh, he was one of the skeletons i remember that right uh, and he was from the opposite cast of me and i asked him you know kind of what i pretty much what i told you of what i think why the animated objects are alive right and he added something that blew my mind and maybe this might blow your mind just as much if not more he said what it, he said how i he said how i see it is they're they're uh supernaturally taken over by the soul the people who trespassed what and i'm like dang so like a conjuring situation too like, yeah 100 percent. that makes and that's another thing that makes sense too because there's we've known within the story obviously the security guard right when you walk in that's been a staple he's dead on the floor um mm -hmm. from the people that are inside there but yeah what if these are all the like uh it's kind of like a little willie's wonderland five nights at freddy's kind of fill where all these right. you know animatronics are possessed by the souls of the people who have tried to come in um mm -hmm. even the people that probably worked there in the past were maybe just sinister and it's it is like a willie's wonderland situation where they all just trap their souls in these bodies for eternity so this is their yeah, hell yeah. you know what i mean so yeah that is that's right. yeah. a lot of fan theories going into next year now oh for sure i'm i'm always wondering what they're going to do next even with whatever the billion paranormal spot because i'm optimistically um, I guess in a way, curiously hoping that they utilize that space well, which they will. Right. But in a way, I'm just like, how are they going to, like, um, overlap paranormal in terms of like scary form always evolutionizing and surpassing its predecessor in some shape or form? Right. Because you know, last year we were given uh, Mesmer and the Goring Twenties, uh, which were really great additions and i can't wait to see uh the gore and 20s uh go from here you know last year was its debut year there's a lot of stuff i mean the talent was all phenomenal they all played the roles great and you know the story was great it's just a matter of how can we step it up every year and make this a star attraction at our parks um exactly right es of especially with the very small zone the very small space they were given they made it work so yeah, you know, I was very pleasantly surprised when I went last year on my night off. Um, and, you know, I've noticed and some people that have come the first few weeks say that after that, they just added more people in that zone. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's cool to see things evolve. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad to see. I can't wait to see what year two of Goring 20s has to offer, um, what mm -hmm. more of the story we get. Uh, I would love it one year if, uh, and and I'm a fan of this. This is how far back I go, too. I remember back, uh, way back when they used to have the maze right there at the, the you know, the bumper car. So I'm hoping one year oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they do a maze and they bring that location back for like a Goring 20s kind of like origin story in a way of, of how – you know, we get to see more of, of the, the, the liquor that they use, the elixir, I think that's what it was called, uh, the elixir, and, and just to see how that, you know, ties in more to maybe Sarah Marshall or something, you know, maybe this is, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. this is maybe this is a, a, a sister town to, to Ghost Town or something, you know what I mean, like in the 20s, I so. so. Good, good idea that I think that would definitely be cool to see, um, you know, maybe even if I were to make, you know, a, a fan theory, maybe one of her relatives or maybe even her dad created this elixir exactly you know what i mean and and that even go that it's starting to even think of even mesmer too and all this stuff you know and mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it, it's cool because with origins it, it gave us that opportunity to open up to tie everything in to this storyline the entire park right. leading up to the right. i know i think we're about a year away from the 50th anniversary two years a year or two 50th is coming really soon 
and mm-hmm. you know they're gonna go big. This is the haunt that started it all. This was the the, the this is the premier Halloween uh, event every single Halloween. So exactly. uh, I'm excited to see what they do for the 50th and, and tie that story more or or do more things and, and create more originals. You know, it should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So dark ride, great time for you. That was year four, year five. Uh, where are we at now? Is that 2018, 2019? Oh, this is 2019. 2019. The year, uh, the last year of Scary Farm for at least until they had their year off and whatnot. But mm-hmm. right. 2019, where do we see you next? Um, similar name, but different concept, Dark Entities. Dark Entities all the way. Now, this was the one that, of course, replaced uh, Tooth Fairy. So it was probably good to return home a little bit in that area right. again, right? Mm-hmm. That was fun. Yeah, it was it was a dope it was a dope maze. I you know um I'm a big fan of sci-fi, you know, even outside of horror like Star Wars or or personally with my grandpa Star Trek, because right. he grew up with that and he got me into that. So, you know, it, it was cool to be in it was funny because I thought we were zombies before even auditioning. <laughs> and you know, and, I mean not like full on like infected, but right. I was way wrong when I was told about that in scare school. I'm like Oh, okay, so we're kind of like possessed in a way. Yeah. By this one entity. And so pretty much how I was this character. And it's funny, the name of the character is it's something you wouldn't expect for a monster, but we were supposed to be human anyway. Um, his name was Quincy, and my grandma thought it was hysterical because she loves history. So there you, <laughs> you go. gotta give it at that. So, you know, if you go like for example, if you watch Theme Park HD's flow through of that, right. Um, you know. I'm panicking as I would if I were a victim, you know? So, and if you watch like the later videos, for example, you know, when you guys came through already at that point, I was pretty much in a can, try to be canon with the, the time frame of the season right. going less and less human. So, you know, when people come through, I'd say, you know, get to the escape pod or, you know, it's down the hallway, which honestly, I did not know as the character has already been a bad place to go. <laughs> so it's kind of giving people to, you know, unintentionally, but yet intentionally uh, a safe route. Exactly. And, and it's funny too, because sometimes I would yell, you know, get out of my head and just acting like a complete lunatic and kind of giving the old asylum vibes in a way. Right. Um, I know there was a few times where I would even pull the Ash Williams <sighs> effect of like my hands all possessed and I would actually go full on method acting and slam my head against the wall not a point to where i'm burning my head out of the maze right but but people were panicking they're like what is wrong with this guy (laughs) even one even one guy was like dude did they accidentally hire a lunatic (laughs) i was trying so hard not to laugh that's the hard part about having makeup man is you know you can't really hide your face when something funny like that yeah sometimes you just gotta act like you know nothing happens exactly it's cool because you know, it was honestly next to the hog and red barn. This role was, for me at least, the one of the more physical ones. Right. I mean, it got even to the point where um, the the one scare they have in there where you're in the pod and you press that button, it's gotten to the point like halfway through that season, I would kind of pull off a bungee scare. Oh, nice. Where I would run fast enough, or I would leap while pressing the the trigger thing on the floor. Right. And I know one guest um, said, man, this guy thinks he's Spider-Man. <laughs> and yeah, it's, you know, it's funny because when that would happen, especially if the thing doesn't work, because sometimes when I worked it, it would either not work at all, which honestly I preferred because no one would see me. Right. They would use because I would emulate the running footsteps that you hear in paranormal activity. For right. Because people would hear that first and they'll be like, what is going on? And it just bam, right in their face. <laughs> um so doing that was fun or you know if the sometimes the light would keep flashing right and that would get annoying after a while but then i turned that annoyance into an advantage because i would um for example in the asylums last year in 2008 there's it was actually pretty cool how when they it looked like they didn't have the pexi glass in the solitary confinement room anymore at that point and so in TPA's video, they had a guy in there who was acting like there's a wall there and then he would just get right in people's face. Oh, not. Yeah. So, I love those scares. 
yeah so like you know in that effect you know there's no plexiglass if any just a few so people would think oh there's no way he can get us and i just reach out and they would one guy fell to the floor and started crawling so at this point i was already uh, agile enough to where i started crawling toward him and it's funny because his friend um was like dude you're crawling away so fast you might want to just get up and bail <laughs> oh man it was it was i love hearing guests just roast their friends out of good spirits and my my favorite scares before um if you want we can move forward or if we can stay in the topic it's all yeah, yeah good from here um but one of my favorite scares is if you know either an adult or a child says something stupid like legitimately stupid where it could ruin the vibe for everybody right either i would say something in character to make them snap out of it and go right back to oh i'm in a horror movie or and their friends or family would respond to that. Or another one, which I would mostly prefer, is they would say something or in a way do my job. And I'd be like, all right, you know, I didn't have to mess. I was scared of the kid or the or the the adult being a being a knucklehead. So Yeah, you I get you get you battle, get, though. Yeah, you get those you get those guests that in there that just trying to act all tough and everything and it's just like, bro, mm -hmm. let me do my right. job. You just it just just be a guest. That's it. That's all I exactly. ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because um, I see it all the time when I'm sitting around scare zones or I'm going through mazes. I'm just like, bro, you're just ruining the whole right. thing. Just enjoy it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if what you do when that happens, but I know my mom is not afraid to tell those kids to knock it off when she goes, this is a guest. And I remember one of the years I went with her, she, you know, some, some kids were being stupid. I think they were trying to kick or do something with the monster. And my mom yelled, knock it off. I mean, she has that yell where, you know, if, you know, my friends and I, including myself, think, you know, we we used to say, hey, you should work haunt because of that voice, you know, and she's just, but, you know, she's like, nah, my age, I can't do it. Um, Get her know, a so. nice, simple, like, uh, a little area with you and then boom, you get the mother-son uh, duo right there. That would be cool if she didn't have a short temper. <laughs> you know, she, she, you know, a good friend of mine from Streets, you know, uh, said like, "Hey, you know, you should try it for streets or a maze." And she goes, "No, I, I would lose. I, you know, I won't. I won't. I won't last long. I have a short fuse." <laughs> She's not afraid to admit it. So, yeah. well, that's uh, you know, but it's good that she comes in and visits you. That's awesome. And and to see exactly. to see to watch you work, and she's being a very supportive mother at that. And that's right. really fun to to see that uh, your parents are just coming over to support. You know, that's awesome. So. Yeah, for sure. It, it's funny too when she cusses me out, and then she'll apologize right afterwards. <laughs> oh but, man, it's not the greatest, right? You you have your own mom cussing you out because you just scared the shit out of her. I'm surprised I haven't broken character yet. In fact, she would be the only person I would break character for just for that alone. <laughs> that is hilarious, man. So, going on to 2020, man. Obviously, uh, the good our our, our good friend uh, the vid comes around and. Uh, just just shuts everything down, man, and and we get taste of Halloween to kind of give us the vibes of haunt season, but it ain't quite there yet. But out mm -hmm. of the blue, 2021 rolls around, and Knotts little by little starts announcing tickets. Yep. They start announcing the mazes, the scare zones, the entertainment, everything that's coming to Not Scary Farm 2021. Not Scary Farm is back for the 2021 season. Where do you go for the 2021 as the grand return? of haunt since the one year off where do you go from there and how do you how do you make it come back um well how they did it last year was it was very different they either at least for me personally because i didn't ask very many who did audition right because some of us didn't we were just like for myself i was told hey you know we either have dark entities or we have a spot for you so i said i just went with the routine and said you know what what you got so you know, the interviewer said, oh, we have corn, we have a corn stalker for, uh, for pumpkin eater. Nice. And I said, sure, that sounds like fun. And, you know, being a corn stalker in that maze was, was a blast. It brought, it was actually the best, I would say it was probably even better than if I were to pick dark entities, because in a poetic way, I guess with scary farm starting over that season, it was like, I was the demon all over again. Right. So I kind of had the same vibe going. 
um, except the only difference is, other than the maze and the character, I kind of, instead of giving a insidious feel with the demon for this character, I gave a long chainy kind of vibe with there how you go. And stuff. So yeah, taking taking a taking a page out of the classics. I like that, man. That, yeah. If without those movies, I don't think horror would be where it was at today, man. Thanks to Universal, man. Those guys made sure. some iconic monster films, and uh, they yeah. forever. I have a giant poster of Frankenstein that just stares at me and. The monster, man. I love the monster. It's one of my favorites. That is amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it was cool. You know, um, the thing about that maze that was even more fun is I was moved around a lot. Right. More so than any other maze. Um, my favorite spots, if I were to pick, were inside the pumpkin gourds. That was fun. Because there was actually one spot where I don't remember any other talent using, which before you go right, right before you go through the threshold of the bug room. Right. There was a little corner right there with the, one of the support beams from the roof. Right. So I would be behind that. No one would expect a monster to hide back there. Yeah. So I would either go near their ear while they're already freaking out with the water dripping and all that. Yeah, yeah. And I would either hiss in their ear or or I'd do the predator uh, gargle effect, which I won't do because, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't want it. <laughs> no, you're good, man. That is, I, I I give props to anyone that can even do that in general. That is a very hard thing to do. Yeah, it, it's you know it had to be the right moment too when things were more quiet. I think too, yeah. not only when things are quiet, but when your adrenaline's racing and you're trying to do something, like it it will come out naturally as well. Having you do it on command is like different, but having it doing it with adrenaline and and in the moment is is a whole different story because your mind's like, oh, if I pull this off, it's gonna be a good scare. Right, exactly. And the thing that, because, you know, we don't use clear gloves in the mazes since I would probably guess 2012, if I were to go further back by memory. Right. So I don't have a clear glove, obviously. So I would use the pole to slam on. Nice. And I asked my cast lead at one point, I said, is that damaging park property? I just want to make sure. And she was like, no, because it's steel and you're not trying to intentionally ruin it. So, yeah, but I did have to be careful. You know, not because there's been a few times where I'd accidentally hit my head on it. Oh, because I would forget it was there. But luckily, the the mask. I mean, it's. It, I would say it's a very well produced party city mask. If I were to compliment it, we so, need to get it, you one of those uh, and just blend it in. We'll paint a hard hat that way. If you do hit your head again, boom, you're good. Right. Well, I think because of the adrenaline, it didn't hurt me as much as it probably could have. Right. So there was one time where I accidentally. Um, hit my shin on it. Oh, and, you know, and it was painful. But luckily, there were guests coming, and you know, there were the rowdy kind where yeah. they're probably in my face and all that. So I just used that, I guess, pain to just roar at them. I mean, I roared at them. So I mean, these kids went from uh, Jersey Shore mode, to put it this way, to um, I don't know what's going on, but we're fight in flight, and we're through the flight. <laughs> Uh, it, oh man! And my very and one of the other rooms I enjoyed was um, being over in front of the Peter's house. Okay, I was kind of pulling the. This is where I was, especially pulling the more Lon Chaney vibe of going between the trees. There was even these pumpkins that actually you can, you know, lift off. Oh ground. wow! So you know, I was luckily my Cassie that came through didn't tell me not to do it because she knew that I wasn't going to do anything stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so, to guess with them and you know if they try to touch a pumpkin i would say this is my work you want to be like him you know, <laughs> yeah face, so yeah, it was for cool. it, man yeah pumpkin eater. Thing I did this, exactly oh sorry go ahead i no i was just saying i love uh, pumpkin eater is a good one man i mean i've always felt uh I like it because it's a very small spaced maze too, so it's got that mm -hmm. claustrophobic vibe. Where uh, I don't know if that's what they were trying to go for, or, or it's just because of the space. But I, mm -hmm. I do like that aspect of the of the maze, and it really kind of puts you on your on your toes even more with that whole claustrophobic vibe. Like, what's coming around the corner next? Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are my favorite scares and just mazes in general. Because you know, I get startled, but I don't get scared. Right. But. You know, close, close quarters and just all that. It just, it has that urgency feel to it. Yeah. I'm just more chill about it, but I'm definitely, you know, as I would say, bringing me back to my youth of what's around that corner when you're going 
you get up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water. Yeah, for real. You're going to see a dark figure just standing in the corner and stuff. Oh, I definitely pulled that off in those kind of mazes. I, I remember when I was working in the vine portion before you go into the, the giant barn, which was also nostalgic. They even used a prop in there of the guy on the cross, which was also amazing for me. That's awesome. Uh, but right before, this is when the pumpkin, the, when the talent wasn't controlling the pumpkin, it was just me in there. Right. I would actually stand right next to where you would enter that room when you go around that corner. Right. And I would just slowly walk behind the wall, kind of like something you would see from a horror film from a distance. And I've gotten so many people, including grown men, just losing their minds. They're just like, no, we are not. I'm not going forward. And you know, there's times where they would push them through and, you know, they would just run. And then I just go and I just chase them out. Chase them out, man. I love the chasing. Love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> it, I have to be smart, though, because, you know, you got such it's not like streets. Yeah, it's more of, I, I actually don't chase people that much. But when the opportunity happens and I know the maze pretty much it, it's always at the point where i know the maze layout right so i know if it gets out of hand by the guests i'll just leave them alone stop yeah right right i like that uh, it's I... funny too because sometimes there are scares that you don't think would work even if it's something completely random that you don't mean to do right so like for example in dark and enti- not dark any sorry uh, in dark ride there was this piece of cloth that i found from the room I was in, I think it, it was in the court in the catacombs room. And it was this small piece of cloth. So I picked it up and I was just going to toss it to the side because it was in guess way in my way. One of us was going to slip. And the, you know, it's right in the first part of the maze. So when I, you know, somehow the guest saw me throw it without knowing where it came from. And she automatically and she did not want to go back in. She did not want to go in. Her boyfriend or whoever that guy was with his friends came through. <laughs> she was, I'm like, really? That's all I had to do for this person? You're like, easy freaking money. Right. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Um, yeah, man. So looking forward to this season. Um what what do what do you want to do next? Are you are you gonna continue to uh maybe try out some different mazes and different experiences, see how you can improve on that, that, that very talented method acting, or are you going to, you going to take a shot at streets one of these days, man? What, where can we see you in the future? Um, for streets, I'll, I'll let you know very soon. Um, after, uh, I discussed this year, uh, for this year, I'm planning on doing Mesmer. Nice. Cause I've never done a trippy maze before. And the character's, that I wouldn't mind doing, even though pretty much all of them I would love to play because they're just so unique. Yeah. Um, but my main, if I were to pick my top three, it would be the Nethers. Um, if you, you know, are you uh, familiar with them? Or yeah, I love I them? loved Mesmer last year, bro. Mesmer was my yeah. favorite. It, it's mine too. When I came through, and you know the the Nethers are like these long cloaked looking dudes, and right, like those are gotta be cool. To be, so I picked that as my first choice and the last two um zoetrope yes I mean it literally is me as a skeleton it just has black hair on the back I don't need to worry about putting something over my hair or anything. yeah 100 percent yeah and the last one I would choose because of my improv which has actually been suggested by a few friends of mine uh to be mesmer himself in the first room oh that'd be a lot of fun the top hat and everything man yeah, I, I even, you know, I have a good voice that I can emulate without doing the narration. Right. Um, I just have to have the the vibe going as much as I could without it making it my own because that's yeah. a big deal. Exactly. Um, but the other mazes, you know, these other mazes I just threw out there to my cast league last year, you know, so I didn't put them in any significant order. The other two I would pick is Origins and Waxworks. Oh, so you you're choosing all the solid ones right there buddy heck yeah six you know six years uh, seven years see what six years do, does to me i lose track <laughs> exactly um, man it's it, but you're having fun doing it mm-hmm. you know that's the fun part you you were a fan growing up into it and now you're actually you, you're going on what is this you're gonna be your sixth or seventh year 
It's my seventh year. Seventh year, man. And and not to mention, you'll probably be here for the fiftieth, and that'll be a lot of fun too. And and to, to see when you get to your ten year, man, like that's gonna be a lot of fun. <sighs> It's it's my boggling to think I'm like home stretch to the 10th. I know, dude. 10 right there. 10 years and you've done a lot of like just think about it. I mean, thinking about your history, you know, you'll you'll be a part you've been a part of such amazing mazes that will go down in the history of Not Scary Farm forever. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, 20 years down the line, people will still be talking about Mesmer. They'll be talking about Origins. They'll be talking about, you know, um paranormal tooth fairy you know all these mazes they'll be talking about them down the line you know especially when people rank them off or have favorites and all that right it's part of the lore without intentionally being it you know that's what a friend told me about that i'm like that's a cool way to look at it yeah yeah you know and for the 50th i'm this is when i'm gonna try out for ghost town oh good job good good job i mean i think honestly you you've put in a long time on on mazes so i think the 50th hopefully if 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 the opportunity arises, maybe Ghost Town will get you on after your your many years of service, and and we could start a new journey there. That'd be a lot of fun. Exactly. You know, a, a friend of mine who was one of the people, if I remember correctly, I met at Rick's TPA meetings. Um, you know, so personally, without revealing any info, because he wants to keep this, you know, in the down low as yeah, a right. surprise. But I have a motivational reason for me wanting to go to streets in Ghost Town with him. It's right. my way of thanking him for supporting me all these years, you know. And so, and a lot of a lot of a lot of legends I heard are leaving. I don't know who. Some of them I don't know. Yeah, so, I mean, there's talks and, and rumors about a lot of people after the 50th. They're gonna call quits. Uh, who knows? Who knows how they're going to feel even after the 50th or if they're going to want to do or just hang it up at the 50. I mean, that, that can open up a lot of space, too, though, if that is true mm-hmm. for uh, new course. new talent and new ideas to come along. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see uh, what happens at the 50th and, and, and how it, it ends with the Big Bang for a lot of iconic uh, people we've seen for Definitely. many years on the streets. And if it uh, and what becomes the birth of 51 for new ideas and, and fresh new uh, faces for these streets uh, for 51. So I'm excited to see what happens between uh, now and, and the 51st, you know, because, you know, the 50th we know is going to be a, a, a banger of event. But the 51st is I'm assuming we're going to see a lot of new fresh faces in both mazes and, and streets. So I'm excited to see what ideas these people come up with and and how it ties into the story, man. It's, it's going to be a fun time. It's a lot to look out for, man. We're living in a good era right now. We are. We're living in the haunt renaissance. Yeah, exactly, it, man. It, it's cool with the 50th is like, you know, this is another step for me. If I don't get streets, like, oh, you know, let me rephrase that. If I don't get ghost town, I'm just going to go completely out of my comfort zone um, and just say, any streets are maze. There you go. Like, I'm not even, I'm I'm like, I'm not picky to begin with. I just, I guess to put it this way, I, I'm open to any suggestion. It's more of like a wishful thinking kind of thing. Right. And, you know, a friend of mine who I mentioned earlier from Red Barn, who I was uh, working with, you know, he's always supported the fact that I would like, that I want to do what I want to do. While at the same time, just, you know, don't be discouraged either. Right. If you don't get it. Because he goes every, you know, he's worked in Red Barn twice. Right. And Dark Entities one season because he didn't work last season for uh, reasons. And so, you know, there's people I know that just say, you know, just I would, they say, I suggest you just to just go with the flow, but we still support you. And I just tell them, I'm like, well, I really do appreciate it. And yeah, it's man. just my way of, not you know being a deer in the headlights as i described it doing you know the auditions and whatnot having a game plan without expectations as my uncle put it perfectly exactly man so a lot to look forward to this haunt season man a lot to look forward to in the future you've had a great run uh six years going on seven strong years of of haunt man and and, and i can't wait to see what happens with you this season whether you 
um, end up in any of those three mazes that you would love to be in Waxworks, Origins, or even Mesmer, man. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this: I'll be through. I'll be going through all of them because I love them all equally, um, and I, I have a good time. So, before we wrap up today's podcast, man, I got to ask you the last and usually the hardest question: mm-hmm. What's your favorite scary movie? Chucky, because that's what Hands started down. it. Hands down, Child's, Child's Play, Play, the first one. Mm-hmm. The first one. Uh, how do you feel about the rest of the series? You know, it has its ups and downs, but there are definitely other horror franchises that I would personally say make my brain hurt. <laughs> so at least they try to keep continuity because I remember a friend of mine from college, we had a playful debate about you know which horror franchise is the most convoluted. He thought it's one of those cool differences of opinion, but you don't have it against the other person kind of thing. Right. You know, he's like, oh, the Chucky fran- you know, Child's Play franchise is very, you know, brain numbing. And I said, have you seen Texas Chainsaw franchise? That and Halloween, man. Halloween is they're everywhere. I mean, you got Halloween 1 and 2. Then you got Halloween 1 in 2018 and Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Then you got Halloween freaking 3 on its own. Then you got 4 through 6. Then you got you got all these timelines. And I'm just like, can we just, like, keep everything accurate and just make it the roots of this killer just killing people? Get A to point B, please. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So, yeah, I dude, Chucky. I always thought that the choose-your-own-adventure with Halloween, though. That kind of helps me not get so confused. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you just you choose the route you want to go, you know? If you want to mm-hmm. just watch them all in, in chronological order of when they were released, by all means, have fun. Um, right. One through three are amazing. Four is decent. Five and six mm-hmm. get a little wacky. H2O yep. was a good revival. Resurrection was just, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, <laughs> Rob Zombie's first Halloween remake is pretty enjoyable. It's pretty watchable. The second one, I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, <laughs> and then we go to the 2018 where it's like, we're going to just wipe the slate clean from one and we're going straight from 2018. And that was just a phenomenal film. And Halloween Kills was just visually for the kills were amazing. Now I'm excited to see what Halloween ends, how we end this. And hopefully we get the the final confrontation of Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers and end it once and for all. Right. I I, I would like to hear how before, you know, because I have a question for you regarding that movie real quick. Right. How would you like to see that movie end? It, it has to, in my way, if, if they truly want this to be the last Halloween film, I mean, that from what they've said, the way I would end it is you have to put Laurie versus Michael up against each other at the end of the film. Now, mind you, let, let's have Michael and, and, you know, Lori have their little adventure throughout the film that leads up to that event. So we see Michael Myers kill more people for the last time, and they, they have, like, this final showdown. How I would end it is they both kill each other, and the only one to live is her granddaughter, which is going to be the last of the Strode legacy. Same here, actually. That's really cool that we have the same uh, idea of what we want to see. That's just – that's if you want this to truly be the last Halloween film, which – from John Carpenter, from uh, David Gordon Green, Blumhouse and everything, this is what it's sounding like. This is going to be like, you know, and eventually 20 years, 30 years down the line, someone will pick this franchise up again and reboot it again. Right. Do their own things with it. Yeah. So. I, I What I thought would be really mind-boggling and it's just light bulb moment just now. Right. What if they have a, a, a situation of having your cake and eat it too, where, you know, Michael and Laurie both die. But in essence, Michael still lives on as a, like, you know, kind of mirroring real life where even serial killers who have been executed, right. they're like the, like the Zodiac killer, but in a Michael Myers sense, like, no, even though he's gone, everyone till the end of time could be affected by what he left. Yeah, exactly. We get like maybe a, a copycat killer or something, you know what I mean? Like kind of like a scream yeah. vibe. Which would be kind cool. of without the copycat because there's only there's only one Michael, but yeah, there's only you can't you can't replace Myers, bro. There's only one brutality in Michael Myers, so right. Well, I would love William Defoe to be Freddy if they ever do a <sighs> remake justice, dude. I've been waiting William Defoe to even voice the Joker. Hey, maybe in ten years they'll do another. Hopefully, <laughs> maybe an anime, at least an animated movie or something. Like I just need to hear it once, just to you know, he's got the voice. It's great, yeah. Rusty. It has been an absolute pleasure to get to talk with you and hear your extensive history with the event and to hear your point of view of, of how you play your characters and how you uh, 
your, your scare tactics are. I really enjoy it. And I can't wait to see what you do this season. And you know we will be there. You will probably scare the shit one of me and my buddy. Um, it'll be a great time, man. I'm excited. Um, so best of luck to you this year. Hopefully you get to one of those three mazes that you want to audition for and best of luck to you in the future. Hopefully we get to see you on ghost town streets for the 50th. But if not, I will love to see you wherever you end up in the 50th. And, and hopefully if you don't get the 50th, hopefully the 51st opens a lot of spots and more opportunities for you to get in as well. But I'm, 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 I'm rooting for you, man. I'm hoping we get to see you at the 50th in ghost town. But like I said, we'll be happy to see you wherever you're at and in, in, in the 50th, but I can't wait to see what you do this year too, man. And, it's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, you're welcome back anytime to talk about more haunt. If you want to come back uh, in the future, man, we're, we're, we're always here, man. But uh, you have any social medias or anything that people can follow you at or keep in contact to see your your uh, your current haunt stuff uh, to, to, to get to follow? Um, I have an Instagram and Facebook, but uh, it's mostly just for uh, friends and family. But I don't have anything big like some of the other talent do. Right. Maybe uh when we get to when we get to streets we'll we'll see what we'll we'll see where it goes from there, right? Maybe maybe my comfort zone would be a lot more broader. There you go, man. So make sure to look out for this guy. You probably won't even know what he looks like during the season, but he'll probably know what you look like and he'll scare the hell out of you. Um but brother, thank you so much for being on the show. We know you got a Knott's Berry Farm trip ahead of this after this episode, so go enjoy Knott's Berry Farm. Have a great uh Friday evening. Uh, for all those new to the channel, my name's Anthony from the Knights of Horror. We do a wide variety of things here, podcasts, uh, horror-related content, convention coverage, uh, haunt coverage, uh, you name it in the horror community, we do it in the SoCal area. Um, if you guys are new here, uh, go ahead and follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. And if you guys are first-time uh, viewers, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Frankenstein Creations. Go check them out if you're a scare actor or if you're just a Halloween nut like myself. They got amazing, amazing work that are being sold, uh, actually hand-sculpted, uh, painted, and even airbrushed and, and all that stuff. Details, everything, all done by them. So go check them out. Um, with all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Miles Horror Podcast, and we will see you guys next week for another episode. In the love.